Hey, how's it going today? Uh, real quick, we're going to give you a real brief overview on the tree guard cabling and then show you the simplicity of how to do the splice that's clearly laid out in the catalog every year, actually, since we've had tree guard. So between, you know, the, the visual reference that's been in the catalog for years and then this little helpful video, it should, you know, demonstrate the ease at which you can splice tree guard. So, you know, you've got a two ton, four ton, eight ton of the rope. The blue tracers mean it's the 20% stretch. The green means it's the 5%. And then we have slings in two ton, four ton, eight ton, and 12 ton. The two through eight ton will have an overload indicator sewn into the, it is similar to a screamer, a deceleration lanyard and it's sewn right into the two inch webbing so that if the tree, the stems that you've cabled actually get loaded in a significant wind event, that orange tag will be totally sticking out. It's obvious to you, the arborist, and to your client. And as I said, it's super easy to splice. You just grab your tree guard, pull it out, okay? And then the first thing you wanna do is just Pull a few strands so you can create a taper. And grab your tape, electrical tape works mostly because it's a little bit more waterproof. It's not gonna be on there permanently, so it's no big deal. And just tape that down so you're creating a little bit of a point. And I'll show you doing it with the FID, and then also show you that you don't have to have a FID to splice this. And when you get to the larger diameters, you know, the 18 and the 26 mil, you're not gonna find a FID that's practical having the canopy with you anyway. So, sling goes around the tree, the stem you're cabling, clearly you're up in the canopy, the appropriate height. You want to have a good sling leg angle, that might be kind of hard to see, but what we don't want is a real wide sling leg angle, because it'll be putting too much pressure on the tree. Just go through your eyes on your sling. You're going to ultimately want to bury about 15, 16 inches of tail. So doing it, pull out about that much, and I just open up the center of the 12-strand hollow braid, taking care not to snag any strands, and go right through. And I want to leave myself Again, talking about good sling leg angles, you know, about a two to three inch high, okay? In their instructions, they say just to go through once, skip down a couple inches, and then rebury it. I'm just gonna come down a couple inches. I put the fit on the line. I'm gonna go right in the center and just. Being careful not to snag. And you just milk it down. And then just exit. Cut the end of the tape off. And now you're just gonna milk it. We got that core that we put in, is buried inside. There's our splice, good and strong. 
couple little tricks that you can do that I found in the field that works. Let's say you've got a pretty short span. You can do what's called a red book brummel and weave it through two or three more times. And then you can get away with burying a shorter tail. That way you don't have to worry about doing a crossover bury on two tails. You just go to the other side of the canopy, do the same splice. You can also, if you want, instead of using the tree guard rope, still utilize the slings, which keeps you from having to drill into the trunk. And you could use your uh, EHS cable with tree grips and install a static system onto these anchors. And that's as simple as that.